Brian Wilson, Mary Catherine Hamm, Brian Neiman, today's newsmakers, and you, the morning majority. AM 630. Oh, what, what's that? I haven't heard that song in years. Not since 1968. That's what, naturally stoned. Could that be the avant-garde, Brian? That could be, that could be. That is actually, believe it or not, Chuck Woolery, who is a game show host of Note, of course, and a man that we are turning to increasingly in this country to save us from our economic woes. He has a website called Chuck Woolery Save Us, and we're going to take a little clip of it. He's on the line right now. Chuck, can you believe we dug that one up? No, I can't believe it, and you actually inverted this website to save us Chuck Woolery. Well, okay. Well, I'm sure the Google... Brian has all those inversion problems. <laughs> the Google would straighten it out, I'm certain. Hey, hey Chuck... Listen, let, me, let me say something right away. Number one is, uh, Major, I have always appreciated you on television. I think you're one of the smoothest most even-tempered guys, and I really miss seeing you as much as I did. However, I'm sure you don't miss the job. <laughs> Chuck, that's awfully nice of you to say, and I just want to say back at you, uh, and this is sort of a bucket list thing for me, talking to you on live uh, radio. This is a great thing. Uh, Chuck, a huge fan of your work, uh, your body of work, and uh, for me, it's just a great honor to talk to you, man. Well, thank you. I appreciate that very much. Now, you've got this website, and, and you have come up with ideas that will help save America in this time of need. And we want to run just a little clip. One of the things that you say is, well, you know, we need tax money. We need tax revenue to pay for all the things that government does. There is one area that we have not tapped into, and that is the Amish. While they're out raising their barns and growing their beards, we'll be instituting new taxes on the Amish so we can keep living beyond our means. <laughs> There's the Amish tax, 48%. The fireplace and furniture tax, 16%. The child tax, 18%. Yes, of course. The my name is Jebediah tax, 9%. The triangular reflector tax, 31%. The mustacheless beard tax, 19%. And the unshaven underarm hair tax, 12%. That comes up to 153% by the time you're That's all through. Right. It's like they got buckwheat in a headlock, these women, I tell you. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> well, I, well, you know, 156%. Uh, listen, these thieves in Washington keep uh, keep after us for taxes, and, uh, literally because we can, they can live because beyond our means. We can't live that way, but they can I, I, you know, I, I really hate this attitude, and this. There's a couple of phrases that really tick me off. One is, "In service of my country." Well, the military is in service of our country. These clowns that are in Senate and in the Congress are not serving our country. They have a job, and I think that there are two things that shouldn't be cobbled together. One is politician, and the other is just career. Career politicians should never be co cobbled together in a sentence. I, I. I I think the American people are just fed up with this, and I think that's what you're seeing. Actually, it played out on both sides with all these Wall Street uh, things going on and, right. and with the Tea Party. and uh, People are angry. They're mad. They, they see through the veil, I think, finally. Well, so uh, this website, uh, you decided to sort of take some of these ideas that you've had, these conservative ideas, and your, your well-known, well-established sense of humor, and sort of uh, take it uh, to the web. And I understand these things are going viral. Well, yeah, we've we've had about 150,000 hits on. Uh, I, I first came out against uh, uh, or pointing out the hypocrisy, and that's really what it amounts to. I'm just pointing out the hip hypocrisy of Washington, hopefully using humor. And uh, we hit Matt Damon and uh, and uh, Warren Buffett first because that was such a hypocritical. Just because it seemed now, the right thing now to Warren do. Warren Buffett's kind of backed off his whole thing, but I was saying that you know they could donate if they want to, and I even found a I found a, uh, a provision. Uh, I think it's on page 88 in the tax preparation code that can you can donate anything you want. They, they don't want to do that, though. How tough is it to be a conservative and to be associated in the entertainment industry? Impossible. Really? You, you can't. Yeah, it's it's like a reverse blacklist that you can, you can't do it. And and for years, I I just never got into these conversations because it's better just to leave well enough alone. And now that I don't need them anymore. <laughs> <I> just, <laughs> You know, I, it was certainly not courageous on my part because, quite frankly, I, I probably wouldn't have had a career because, you know, they, they, they really don't want to hire you. They don't want to hear it. 
and and I certainly wasn't evangelizing for conservatism, but uh, but they certainly evangelized for uh, for progressives. That's for sure. Well, Chuck, if if you were to try to uh, give two or three pointers to Washington, uh, what would they be? Uh, you say we live beyond our means. Uh, politicians would tell you, well, yes, because that's what the voters tell us to do. Because if we cut or if we try to cut, they either penalize us or raise cane, and uh, we feel pressured by. Negative polling data, and we feel uh, that I, I'm speaking as if I were a member of Congress, trapped by a system that sends us only incentives to spend and rarely sends us incentives to cut. Well, they've created this system with uh, lawyers and making things so complicated. There's an enormous Gordian knot, as I like to refer to it in Washington, and somebody has to get in there and unravel it, or we're going to be in this mess forever, and and we may be in this mess forever, but I'd rather not give up on it. I, I would rather see people who stand for the Constitution get in there and, and do their job, and then go home. Uh, this whole thing, I think that there should be term limits, and I, I believe that uh, probably, you know, 70-some percent of the people in the United States would like to see term limits. I would also like to see Congress live under the laws that they pass for us, uh, which right. they don't do. Uh, there's two things right there. The other thing is, We've got to start cutting spending. If we don't, we're going to be, we're already in trouble. We're going to be in worse trouble. And Greece, I think, has just defaulted this morning, said that they've defaulted on their loan. Uh, well, that's going to be America in a very short period of time if we don't pull it together. And I think right. people recognize this and see it. And it's, it's angering and it's frustrating. And we, the people, quite frankly, are the ones that can do something about it. So if we don't, it's our fault. And if we want to be led around by the nose like we have for the last hundred years, uh, then we will be. If right. we don't, then we'll stand up and vote for people who we believe will change the system and uh, and not believe in this. I'm going to ch- look. The president can't change much. It's the Senate and the, uh, it's the con- it's the Congress that's going to change it. So that's where it has. That's where the first blow has to be dealt. And you know, by the way, someone I, I was doing your show on Saturday uh, on the station, and somebody right. said something about the Tea Party, and I said, you know. Uh, there's one point that I really missed, and that is most people in the Tea Party, the Republicans didn't like them either. Right. I mean, remember Mitch McConnell and uh, what's his name uh, was running in Kentucky uh, for the Senate. He got no support from the from the uh, Republicans establishment at all. So, you right. know, I'm not, I'm not, I think the values of the Tea Party are probably the answer. I'm not sure whether the Tea Party itself is, but the values certainly are. All right, we're very quickly, and I just have a second here. Everybody knows you from Love Connection, the Big Spin, <laughs> Scrabble, Home Family Show, the Wheel of yeah, Fortune. Wheel, uh, but the Wheel of Fortune. You actually were the original host, and I understand there are no copies of those shows that are still in existence. No, they died with Merv Griffin. When Merv passed away, he took all those copies with him. He really <laughs> wanted to acknowledge the fact that I ever did the show. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Listen, Chuck Woolery, thank you for joining us here on The Morning Majority. Great fun. All right, buddy. Nice to be with you. Yeah, thanks a lot. And once again, the name of that website is SaveUsChuckWoolery.com.